Happy New Year to everybody. It's 2022 out there, and I'm Jake. Welcome back to the channel. And today, I'm starting a new series called Musical Muse, which is going to be an informal chat. People are going to ask me questions about mandolin or music or life, and I'll try to answer them. And if you do have any questions about mandolin or music, put them in the comments, and I might just make a video out of it. If you do like this content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, or I think what the cool kids say is smash that subscribe button. Bam! And if you do want to support me in making these videos in a different manner, you can support me financially right here. Recently, I was asked if I had any exercises. <clears throat> Something in my throat there. Recently, I was asked if I had any exercises for fast picking or right hand speed. And boy, oh boy, do I have some thoughts on that. So let's dive right in. Number one, technique has to be there. If you have a solid foundation, it's going to get you super far. And if you don't have a solid foundation, you're going to crumble when speeds get too fast. So there are a lot of YouTube videos out there about right hand technique, and I'm sure I'm going to make some in the future. But for now, I'm going to show you basically what I do. So let's do it. Ba Bam! Mandolin. Now that you got your mandolin. So right now, I'm using a CT55, but I do have a Wigan. I have an Apollo as well. I've been kind of switching back and forth. But basically, you hold your hand out like this, nice and loose, kind of letting gravity do its thing. And all you have to do is insert the pick into the index and thumb, just like this. This is the back side. Index is kind of, you know, kind of chilling back there. Angle depends on what I'm doing. Thumb, this is how much pick is showing. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's like that much showing. I don't know if you can see that. And sometimes it's a lot of pick showing. It just really depends. The way I approach the pick hitting the string is at an angle. So string's going this way, pick is like this, it's creating an angle. It produces a nice warm sound. Now, that's not to say I don't use other techniques to get more brightness out of the mandolin. Sometimes you need the brightness, sometimes you need warmth. You'll go up the fingerboard and create more angle. Now the bridge is kind of resting on this part of my palm. Most of the time I'm using a decent amount of wrist and the idea is to not mute the strings with your palm if you do rest your hand there so you should be able to pick all these without muting so i probably will make another video on right hand but that's just a quick overview number two consistency in practicing will increase your speed i know that sounds super basic but it's so so true let's make the analogy that you're an olympic sprinter but you only practice once a week you're not going to be very good against some of the other athletes who practice every single day same thing applies with picking and speed it's something that you need to work on every day or at least every other day, or, you know, every three days, or four. Depends on your schedule. And not just any kind of practice, but I'm talking about intentional, purposeful practice. So sometimes what I like to do is I like to set a timer for 10 to 15 minutes, and this usually keeps me on track. I'll actually suggest a timer for those Mac users out there. This one's called Just Timer. It's something that you can pull down, it's super easy for your computer, and it just kind of sets a reminder that, hey, your time is up, stop practicing. Or at least stop practicing right hand. So that was number two, consistent practice. And honestly, 10 to 15 minutes is gonna be amazing for you. You do that for a month and you'll be, you'll be flying. Woo! Number three is setting goals. It's the, it's the new year, so you get to make a goal. How exciting. How about for the month of January, you practice right hand technique for 10 to 15 minutes a day and that's it. So I personally subscribe to two methods that really help me in my right hand. Uh, one that I used to do so, so much. I don't do quite as much anymore because of time but this one is just open string practicing. I'm actually gonna link a PDF down below in the description. Uh, this is gonna be some basic right hand technique exercises, nothing too complex, but they do help. Let's roll some footage. I actually have some footage of me, of me practicing this.
make sure you start slow. I'm talking, you can start super slow and work on good tone and timing. With that in mind, you do need to work on speed. I'm not saying practice slow and then someday you're gonna wake up and the speed's gonna be there. You actually do have to practice fast if you wanna play fast. And also, the right hand, it's an athletic move. It's not a stagnant posture. You're, you're moving body parts. You're actually moving not just your wrist or your forearm or your elbow. You're actually working this whole mechanism that reaches all the way back to your shoulder blades. So a really good exercise is to push yourself on the metronome. Push yourself to where you get uncomfortable and figure out why you feel uncomfortable. Do you feel like there's a lot of pressure in your arm? Do you feel like you're dragging in time? Do you feel like your, your pick motions are sloppy? And I've had so many of these drawing board sessions where I'm playing and I get to a speed that I cannot play at and I get super uncomfortable and I have to take a step back and be like, what is making me uncomfortable? Maybe my pick is slipping. Let's try a different pick hole. Let's try to get something that's gonna make me feel more solid so that when I do get to that speed, it's gonna work better. I guarantee every great mandolin player has done this before where they have to go back to the drawing board and figure out what's making them uncomfortable, figuring out what they can change. So there's two parts to this. I went over the one part, which was to work on these open string exercises. The second part is to actually apply them to tunes. So the challenge here is to find a piece that's challenging but does not frustrate you. Because if you get frustrated, you won't practice. And that is no good. So find a piece that challenges you, but that you're excited to play, that you wake up and you're like, ooh, I can't wait to play that today. Could be like a Tony Rice solo, say. Or it could be a Chris Thiele tune, or it could be Bach, or it could be anything. And again, take it slow, use a metronome with these tunes, and work your way up. This is the only way you're gonna do it. You're never gonna magically wake up and be able to do it. So take your time. Number four is expectation. We all want to play fast and accurately. Who doesn't? The truth is it takes years of grinding it out to get to the point where you might feel comfortable playing at really fast tempos. Think of all your heroes. They have spent their lifetime trying to master these techniques. We need to be able to manage expectation with the time that we're given. This is super, super important. We're not all given eight hours a day to practice. I wish that was the case. Life gets in the way sometimes. But if you consistently practice small amounts, we can make a big difference. We just have to realize that the journey for improving as both musicians and actually people just takes time. Just because it takes years and years to get good at picking doesn't mean that we can't enjoy the journey along the way. Number five is really cool. If you feel like you're struggling or stuck in a rut, don't feel bad to reach out to the mandolin community. Maybe reach out to a teacher. I'm a teacher. I know a lot of my mandolin friends are teachers, so if you need a suggestion or a recommendation, I got you. If you don't have the resources to afford a teacher, look at YouTube videos. That's what I did for the first two years of learning. Uh, you can slow videos down. You can look up pretty much any heroes. Actually, some of my heroes have videos on right hand technique on YouTube, which is amazing. So go check out those free resources. You can also reach out to the people over at mandolincafe.com. I know I'm on there. I know there's other professional mandolin players on there. I know there's people who are novices or beginners on there. It's a really, really cool place to meet other mandolin players and also to get tips, tricks, you name it. And never feel bad for asking questions, even if they might seem silly. Don't feel bad. It's okay. I'm sure I've gone through the same questions that you have. Ask away. All right, folks, so that is it for Musical Muse episode one. Go practice that right hand and I will see you later.